Welcome to JSC's Flying and today let's talk about the new update of macOS Ventura 13.4 and if it's safe to update unsupported Macs. But there's one thing we have to talk about and that is AMFI. So what is AMFI? That is the Apple Mobile File Integrity. And since macOS 13.3 Apple changed a lot behind the curtain to introduce the RSR, the Rapid Security Response. And due to that changes, the developers of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher were required to disable AMFI in the OpenCore. The problem is, with that disabling, macOS doesn't prompt you for allowing access for microphone or camera, for instance. So if you're using Zoom, or any other um, meeting like uh, Microsoft Teams or something like that, where you need the app to have access to your camera, microphone or whatever, there is no prompt coming up to grant access in the settings, in the security settings. There are two ways that you can uh, resolve that problem. The first one is to stay on macOS Ventura 13.2.1. That is the latest version where AMFI doesn't have to be disabled and so the permission prompts still work. The other one is that you have to grant permission manually for each app that you're using. If you haven't yet, I would recommend you subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notification as I will soon release a video an explanation video how to do that but because I got so many questions in the comments what about microphone and camera and so on that is the reason for that as always stay on your latest working version before updating so again switch off the automatic updates until maybe you see a video from my channel that it's safe to update and if there are any caveats other than that there are some rumors in the web that when you just enable SIP, the System Integrity Protection, so you go into the OpenCore Legacy Patcher and just uncheck all the check marks that you can now grant access for Zoom or for Teams. Be careful, if you uncheck everything, install it now to the disk and start to reboot, it won't. So you can break your macOS installation and you need a second device with a USB drive, boot from the USB drive and check those SIP settings again. So this doesn't work. To find out if you can update safely unsupported Macs, I have my two old MacBooks here. The first one is a MacBook Pro from 2012 and the other one is a MacBook Air from 2013. And why did I choose those two MacBooks? Because the MacBook Air from 2013 has already a fourth generation Intel chip, a Haswell chip. And with macOS Ventura there is always a problem with pre-Haswell chips, which is in the MacBook Pro, a third generation Intel chip, because the Intel Haswell CPU generation came with AVX2. That is a code set that is required by macOS Ventura. And so the developers of the open core had to find a way to implement some kind of feature to enable Ventura on pre-Haswell Macs. And that is one of the problems because the Mac Pro 2012 also is a pre-Haswell and the Mac Pro 2013, even though it's from 2013, has a Xeon CPU that is also a no Haswell, a pre-Haswell CPU. And that is the root cause of a lot of troubles with the Mac Pro 2012 and 13 that what you can find in my other videos here on the channel. And so those two MacBooks are perfect to compare Ventura updates on a pre-Haswell or on a Haswell chip. Just in my opinion, those generation of Macs, 2012 and newer, are very, very capable of running Ventura. You shouldn't go any older. 
2011 or 10, like the IMAX from that kind of time, I don't recommend Ventura on these very old Macs. But back to these Macs now, are they able of running the update? And so I did two kinds of update. With the MacBook Pro, I just installed the latest open core legacy patcher. And that is always a prerequisite that you just download and install the newest open core legacy patcher. So you install it to the boot disk, reboot that it boots the new version and then apply the root patch so that the root patch is also on the latest version. And then I just hit update. It just downloaded the update. One info to that. The incremental update doesn't work on Ventura with the Open Core Legacy Patcher. So instead of just downloading a few gigabytes, like two or three gigabytes for the update, those unsupported Macs in Ventura always download the whole installer, which is nearly 12 gigabytes. So don't worry, there's a lot to download and it takes some time. After that, the MacBook Pro just updated itself, booted, and as after any update, the root patch is broken, but it just pops up with a message that there is no root patch. You just reapply the root patch again, reboot, done. Everything's fine, no boot loops, no problems with the update. With the MacBook Air, I just tried a different kind of updating. So I hit the download macOS installer button in the Open Core Legacy Patcher, downloaded the whole file into applications, and then did the update from there. Same story, as long as you have the latest Open Core Legacy Patcher installed, it just updates. After the update, root patch is broken. You just reapply root patch, reboot, everything is fine. And then I tried some different things here on the MacBooks. And I tried Safari with rendering some YouTube videos. I tried Apple TV with rendering some videos. Everything worked. There's graphic acceleration, even though these are 10 year old or 11 year old graphic cards. I tried the weather app because the weather app was an app that was crashing in the very beginning of Ventura and the very early stages of the um, appropriate open core legacy patcher. Weather app is working no problem at all on these two MacBooks. Other than that, as I said, stay tuned for the next video how to manually grant permission to Zoom or Teams or anything to be able to use your camera and your microphone again. And so far, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.